So this is Steve and I'm here with Craig Fisher. We're at uh, Canland and Craig, you've got an exciting event going on this weekend. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Sure, what we've got going on is the first annual Fort Wayne Summer Spiel. A uh, curling parlance for a tournament is called a bond spiel. And since it's being held during the summer, it's called traditionally called Summer Spiel. So this is the first annual tournament that we're, ho we're holding. We've got 160 curlers from 22 clubs, which is 40 teams. Uh, those 160 are playing on 40 teams uh, from around the country, as far away as uh, San Francisco, Denver, Dallas, Portland, Oregon, Washington, D.C., upstate New York, as well as a number of clubs in the region. We've got 11 teams from Fort Wayne playing. Uh, and it's really just an opportunity for the Fort Wayne teams to learn a bit about the curling uh, environment, the curling culture, and give a lot of these other teams the opportunity to get on the ice earlier than they normally would. Most curling clubs don't have the opportunity to get on the ice until about mid-October, so a, any tournament during the summer generates a lot of interest with people interested in getting out at a time that they normally can't get out. Uh, you know, 100 and, 100 and, uh, you know, 160 competitors from, from the 40 teams is, is pretty phenomenal for a club that's been in, in, in existence for really only two months. June 5th, we had our first Learn to Curl session, the first time we were actually on the ice. And now, you know, two months later, two and a half months later, we've got 160 curlers from throughout the country uh, competing in this tournament. And uh, it's a lot of excitement from us and, and also building a lot of, of uh, support in the curling community for what we've done in Fort Wayne. Everybody's real impressed with both the facility here, which is a state-of-the-art, excellent facility, and what we've done with the club in such a short time. So it is the first, but you're planning on making this a regular annual Correct. event. Yep, we've, I'm, I'm actively working to get all these teams to sign up to come next year. Hopefully we'll make it even bigger next year. We've got 40 teams this year. I'd like to get to 64 next year. Uh, hopefully we can get the third rank up. Canlan has three ranks. Currently we're doing two ranks with eight sheets of curling. Hopefully next year we can get it to three ranks with 12 sheets of curling. There's not a single club in the United States that has 12 sheets of curling. If we had a 12-sheet bond spiel next year, it would be the largest ever bond spiel in the United States. You mentioned that uh, uh, a lot of clubs don't have ice. Yep. Uh, why would that be? Most traditional curling clubs operate in a in a dedicated environment where the ice is dedicated to just curling, and because of other interests, they typically don't draw in enough people, nor want to pay the expenses of chilling ice during the summertime period. So. Arena ice is really like we'd have here where you share it with hockey and figure skating. It's really the only opportunity for full year-round uh, curling. And also a lot of other clubs don't have the interest or don't have enough pickup from their members to curl during the summer. So there's just a real small handful of clubs that do curling in the summer and even fewer that do tournaments like this. So it's really a great opportunity for us to pull in a larger c curling community into Fort Wayne to try something like this and to compete on our ice. So we're very fortunate to have Canland here in Fort Wayne. Yeah, Canland has like. been phenomenal. You know, my wife and I tried to get a curling club started four years ago when we were just dealing with McMillan. Curling's a, uh, Fort Wayne's a pretty hockey mad town, if, you, if nobody's noticed that before. And with just those two rinks, there was absolutely no way we'd be a curling going. With this facility opening up right at the same time as the Olympics finishing up, it was just perfect timing uh, to really get this thing started up. You know, the combination of the Olympics generating the interest and Canlan opening up the capacity was really what allowed us to get this really started out. So what's curling all about? You know, curling's a, a great sport. Uh, you know, people tend to think of it sometimes as shuffleboard on ice, but there's a whole lot more strategy. I liken it a lot more to both billiards and chess for the, the angles that you need to worry about and the strategy that's involved. So it's a lot more in my mind like, like, uh, like those two sports than, than like uh, shuffleboard. It's a sport that's, that's built on a spirit of mutual respect. There are no umpires. You call your own fouls. Um, it's traditional for the winners to buy the losers drinks after, after the match. Um, and it's, it's really just a, a sport that's a lot of fun. And the thing that I like most about curling is that it's really inclusive. Uh, we've got one team here that's competing that has youngest member age 13, oldest member age 77. How many sports can you think of where a 13-year-old can compete equally on a team with their 77-year-old grandfather? There's really none out there. It's certainly not hockey, certainly not baseball. This is really the true sport where you can, you know, it's sort of a great equalizer. An entire family can play together. Uh, I compete in the beginner's league with my special needs child. I've got a special needs child that competes and uh, 
plays on a team with everybody else and, and sometimes makes a lot better shots than everybody else. The other thing we're doing is we're actually working to get the first Special Olympics curling program set up in the United States. There's not a single other place that does Special Olympics curling. We're working with the uh, Special Olympics Indiana, Can Canadian Special Olympics, the United States Curling Association, Chris Plies from the U.S. Olympic team, and Jackie Kapanaski from the U.S. Paralympic team to get this started and really set Fort Wayne up as the first spot for Special Olympics curling and hopefully then get a lot of clubs getting it started throughout the country. Great. And do you have open enrollment if somebody is interested? Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got what we call Learn to Curls, which is an opportunity for people to come out and, and in a short period of time learn the basics and actually compete in the game. We've got uh, open curl, oh, sorry, uh, Learn to Curls set up August 28th, uh, September 11th, October 9th, November 20th, and December 4th. It's $25 for non-members. You come out, it's a half hour uh, classroom session to learn the rules, two hours on the ice, first hour you learn the skills to actually throw the stones and the second hour you actually play games so by the end of that session you'll actually be playing a game and believe me everybody that, that comes has a great time and leaves with a smile on their face one thing I, uh, I hear the Zamboni and that reminds me uh, the ice is a little prepared a little differently for this correct so uh, for traditional uh, dedicated clubs they've got special tools to utilize to clean you know to scrape the sheets and everything else for an arena ice facility like ours, we use the Zamboni. Uh, typically, when we've got the time, we'll do a, a flood and a, a wet scrape, and then uh, basically the same way they do for hockey. And then we'll do a dry scrape across the ice, uh, which is not traditional for hockey. But what that what that allows us to do is eliminate any runs that are caused by the direction of the Zamboni went. So a a Zamboni run for a typical hockey would go lengthwise. You take a curling stone and, and through the stone along that line, the stone would end up following the line of the Zamboni. So we go crosswise to eliminate that possibility. So it's a little bit different than traditional ice, but the, the ice makers here are 100% dedicated to make the best possible curling ice that they can. Okay, anything else you'd like to add, Craig? I don't think so. I think I covered just about everything. Okay. I appreciate you coming out. Sure. And I'll put um, a link to your website. They can get all the details about the club there. Yeah, excellent. All right, thanks. Thanks, Stephen. I yep. appreciate it.